Hi everybody, how's it going? I was up a little late last night because I was watching that American Idol finale and Bub went on to watch the Game of Thrones finale. I chose to edit that entire time. So who is with me and needing the coffee this morning? Absolutely. Here's what I felt compelled to do, honestly, for a couple of days. Just a classic tutorial. Given what a small but very, very visible part of the beauty community has been going through lately, just all of this drama that is repeatedly getting talked about, it's like I I've seen so so many people saying, I just want a makeup tutorial, and I honestly feel the same way. I just want to do a makeup tutorial, and so that's what I'm going to do today. It's going to really center around this Pro Fusion Pink Nudes palette. I was using this the other day, and I'm kind of playing with it on and off here lately, sometimes just the eyes, sometimes just the cheeks, and I'm realizing how much I enjoy this palette, and this is like a $5 or just under $5 palette here. Um, I found mine in a Walmart store, but as far as online, I see it on Target's website. Wherever you get it though, it's going to be around five bucks. I think it's an amazing deal. I love the cheeks, love the eyes, and I thought maybe it might be fun to try to do a little bit more low maintenance, quick, easy kind of makeup routine. As I sometimes say, I think what I'm doing could become one of those hip pocket looks. You know, you want your glam look, you want your quicker look, but you don't really want to cut any corners still. That's kind of the direction I'm going today. So I've already got my, um, moisturizer, eye cream, SPF on. I use the Super Goop poreless one today. And now I'm going to grab out my Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue Stick. This is in Cashew 3.5. I love the way this feels going on. I haven't used this in a couple weeks, so I'm like, yeah, I remember. Oh, it's so smooth, so creamy, and a great just like everyday foundation. Really like my Sephora Pro Mini Flawless Airbrush with like a stick and cream products because it's small enough it really provides great pressure to get everything all blended out not like this is a task to blend out at all it's very easy but i just end up really enjoying the effect and it's going to be medium coverage this stick is but as i've kind of realized lately you know i don't need every single speck on my face like completely covered from the public sometimes it's fun but it's not an absolute like all the time need. So how about Lane winning Idol? I gotta say, of the ones that were in the finale, I had him third, actually. I thought it was gonna be Madison or Alejandro, but I like Lane, and I think there were just so many good ones in the season this year. It was just interesting to see, like, where the fans as a whole went with their votes, because I, there was so much talent. There were so many end results that I could have seen, realistically, you know? Anyway, we start talking about Idol. This video is gonna go on forever. I'm gonna try to keep with the Program. All right, so I got that stick foundation very quickly and easily blended out. Now I'm going to use my Bare, Mineral, Bare Minerals Bare Skin Serum Concealer, wear it in light. Um, I find this to be a really easy to blend out product. Um, it covers really well, but it feels super light on the skin. And if someone were to come look up close at you, it's like, it's just not a concealer that shows any evidence. And I've been taken to the Beauty Blender lately with my concealers and really liking the end result. I don't know that I've ever used a beauty blender with this concealer. Normally it's a brush and that works great. So don't feel like you have to do this. But I just kind of like, like I get a really quick dispersed spread of the product, you know? Kind of what I end up getting with like using a flat foundation brush. I've explained how that really spreads product well over a large surface area. And I'm feeling like a full size beauty blender kind of does the same. Oh my gosh, I just realized that by the time this video goes up, you're all gonna know that we're having a boy. Oh my gosh. Isn't that crazy, guys? Oh my word. It's just funny because, you know, as I, as I sit here, I haven't even uploaded or totally 100% finished editing the video, so it doesn't feel like it's out there yet. I'm so excited. We were both shocked, but I have like, I, I'm really, really thrilled about this. Alrighty guys, so we got that concealer all blended in. I feel really pretty brightened now on the under eye, but I feel evened out. Um, the area feels lightly hydrated actually, but not too sticky. Still to the point where I'm gonna wanna set it, and I pulled out my MAC Next to Nothing powder that I wear in the shade Light Plus. 
So this is a really, really smooth, nice, lightweight powder. Sometimes powders that feel this soft and smooth tend to deposit more on the skin and perform more like a powder foundation. So I like how soft this is, like really pleasant texture. Doesn't look at all dry or chalky on the skin, but it stays light. It's a lightweight powder that stays in its lane, okay? So if that's all you're looking for, this is a nice option. And I always give credit where credit is due with this one. Dustin Hunter made me buy it. So as you can see, it was mainly about the T-zone and the under eye to apply this. I might, I'm feeling a little dewy all over the rest of the face, so I may just let myself have a little setting powder here. So I got like an afternoon doctor's appointment today, and I just, I want everything to last. And it doesn't take me any time. I already got the compact open, you know. Excellent! Now I want to do some bronzer, and I'm gonna pull out this, um, my Beauty Bakery coffee and cocoa palette, and I'm going to use the Deja Brew <laughs> shade right here, which is like a satin finish bronzer. Love this. This is an awesome bronzer. I've got a lot of bronzers I'm liking lately. Do we need a top bronzers video? Tis the season, right? Okay. Might do that. Might add that to my list of video ideas. As you edit this one, future Emily, put that in your notes. Isn't this a nice little natural tone here? loving. Um, when I mentioned this in the haul, I was really eager to get to show it to you at some point soon. So do a little bit around the cheekbones. Love a nice satin finish bronzer. I'm getting a very realistic feel from this color tone of bronzer. And I'm going to stop there for that palette because I really want to show you the blush and the highlights out of Pink Nudes. So I love that this is a little combo palette here. I think they also have one, is it called Gold Nudes? Nude Nudes? Bronze Nudes? I, there, there's one other version of this where some of the shades don't look quite as rosy eyeshadow wise. But we're going to take Blossom here, which is our matte blush. A matte pink, you know, it doesn't look too crazy but it's really, really fresh on the cheeks. We're gonna take that to the apple here, kind of outer apple, blend upward and outward. Love, love a good blush, especially when you're tired. Mm, nothing like it. And I'm gonna be using all three of these face colors today because I realized how I best like to use them finally. <laughs> Something about that shade of pink, it does kind of give me like an in from the outside, slightly sun-kissed type of look, don't you think? I really like it. Then we've got Fantasia over here and this has shimmer and this could pass as a blush on its own. I feel like it is pinky enough, but here's the way I like using it. I get my brush in, which it picks up a lot of that shade in particular. So tap off the excess, and then I use it kind of like a blush topper. I go exactly over where I just put blush and look at the glow now, compare this cheek to this cheek, you know? Oh, it's like kind of a beauty bakery, you know, cotton candy champagne effect. It does kind of remind me of the lightest shade in that. Glowy blush, y'all, yes! I think the whole world might be a happier place if everybody just wore some glowy blush. No judgment, not too late to start. Then we've got this shade here called Smashing, and it's kind of like a golden, verging on rose gold sort of highlighter. And I am going to use that as well. Notice I'm pulling in a smaller brush. And I'm gonna let this come more on the cheekbone, but I'm gonna be light with it considering I've got like a glowy cheek all over. I'm gonna kind of buff that in. Highlighters don't have to look exactly as they appear, like right when your brush puts it on, right? You can spend a little time blending and really affect the overall impact that they make. You know, it looks real glowy at first, but buff, 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 and it's a great effect. I love the cheek products in this little palette. And then over the weekend, we had an event to go to, and uh, once again, Urban Decay All Nighter has proven itself. You know, it's this product that sits back here, and absolutely anytime I need it, it performs consistently. And I want this to be a great long wearing look too, so do about six spritzes of that and I feel like it's helping you know set the makeup but it's gonna put everything in it for the long haul. Next up I'm gonna do a quick brow just with a pencil here. This is my e.l.f. Uh, Instant Lift in the shade Deep Deep Brown. I feel like you guys have seen me do my brows a bunch of times so I'm probably just gonna breeze through this editing wise. Then I'm using a little bit of the L'Oreal Brown Stylist Boost and Set. This is just the clear. Just give me a little hold. Just 
Man, guys, I look so dewy. I'm almost wondering, is it too dewy after that highlight? I'm putting on just a little, just a little MAC next to nothing here. Just because it's highly reflective looking. Still gonna glow, but this might take a little edge off. We'll see. Now we're gonna do the eyes. And we're gonna start with Milani Eyeshadow Primer. And get just a little bit. I'm never using much when I use this. It's just about that much. And I think that is important because I think when you overuse eyeshadow primer, you can put yourself in a position where it, it's having the reverse effect. It's not like helping against creasing. It is. It becomes the cause of creasing. So just get it really well patted in to the point where you almost feel like maybe you're picking up a little excess product as you blend it. Check it out. The sun is coming out. I feel like the sun's getting earlier and earlier. Okay, now Katy Perry, as I was watching Idol last night, this picture came across my Instagram of her makeup. And look at her eye here. Like, I kind of love how much the pink, in kind of a subtle way, is coming up pretty high as far as the eyeshadow, you know, kind of close to the brow. And I felt like, actually, this palette that I was planning to use could execute that type of a look, perhaps. It's hard to see exactly what's going on on her lid there. She's got a very thick lash on, too. But I'm gonna go to this color called Cupid here. From the looks of it, it's almost like you've got three trios, right? But we're probably gonna be scrambling this up. Um, so I'm taking Cupid, which is a matte, kind of mauve pink. And we're first gonna get this going in the crease because we want that little bit of depth, right? Also, I should point out, there's nothing in this palette that goes super duper dark. So natural everyday looks, kind of like what we're doing today, it will be really well suited for. I have had some really good luck with different Profusion palettes. I like the way the shadows apply and blend and the value is just, you know, insane. You're going into Walmart, Okay, I need diapers, I need dish soap, I need coffee creamer, and how about a $5 palette? Sure, seems fine. Okay, so I'm taking that in the crease, and now on each eye I'm gonna let it kind of come up higher. And this shade doesn't look like super pinky, but it's got enough. We're gonna try to get that, you know, Katy Perry vibe. My look isn't gonna be that glam because I'm not I'm not really feeling like false lashes today. I kind of made a little resolution to myself to not overuse false lashes. Like if I wore them yesterday, which I did, I'm not gonna like probably wear them two days in a row. Um, I think it's important to give your eyes a break and I don't think, you know, having all the glue in with the lash line, I don't think it's really the best thing you can do for the health of your lashes and your skin there in general. So I'm trying to keep that a bit more minimal. Okay, so see how far up I'm taking it? I'm almost taking it to my brow, um, but just keeping it sheer in that zone. Just everything is super blended here. I feel like we need even more. Just big, diffused, easy color. Now guys, I think I'm gonna take this shade called Serenity right here. This is a shimmer, um, just kind of like a champagne little hint of gold shimmer. And I'm not trying to just pinpoint one little zone of highlight. I'm kind of overlapping this entire area. It's not like pink highlight. It's kind of just, you know, they're merging. Kind of pretty, right? We good with that? Then I'm gonna take some of this shade called Heart. It's right above Cupid that we really went big with, and Heart has some shimmer, and it's really like kind of a soft, rosy shade. And I'm gonna apply this over the inner half of my lid. Oh, that's a pretty shade. And then a little bit of bow right here, or bow, right around the inner corner. Then I'm gonna give a little depth on the outer part of the eye, so I'm gonna go over here to Stylish. This shade has some shimmer. It's like a shimmery, kind of plummy brown. This palette did get a mention in that video about makeup pet peeves, because it's so multitasking, but it has no mirror. I still wish it had a mirror. But some of you guys enlighten me in the comments section, and you're like, well, sometimes I don't like the palettes I travel with to have a mirror, because you've got a breakage risk there. And I'm like, oh. Guess it depends on where you think you're gonna have to put it in your travels or like how you're gonna have to store it, you know, if you're on the plane and you can't keep it with you or something. I see that. Okay, so I've gotten a little bit of that shade laid down here on the outer part of the lid, but as you can see, it's not that it's 
not pigmented. It's just not very dark and that's okay. I wanna keep this kind of light and every day still. But I may even take a smaller brush like, you know, my little Morphe guy right here. It fits so well in the outer corner and just let that color kind of settle into the crease a bit more. It's the kind of eye look that really looks very, very, I think, seamless all over. You don't really have like shade here, shade there, everything's in its lane. I feel like given the closeness of all the tones, you know, we've got rosy in the crease, the rose is radiating out, we've got rosy on the lid, but it's a different finish. It's just all kind of meshing together and I kind of like that. Then I'm gonna use a pencil brush and we're gonna go back to stylish and let this be our soft, lower lash line definition. The definition that doesn't look like anything was really done on purpose, you know what I'm saying? This is a great way anytime you're doing like a really light eye, maybe just some mascara with this, and you know, you just don't feel like pulling out eyeliner, but you still want your eye to look kind of completed. Just a pencil brush, and you know, a, a shade that's sort of medium, not too dark. And gosh, the moment I'm putting that down there, I'm looking at my eyes and I'm thinking, I can really see the green. It's bringing out a lot of that tone in my eyes, which is always fun to play with. Now gang, if there was ever a morning I needed it, some Wet n Wild Ultimate Brow Highlight. You know the drill, lower inner rim. Yeah, I got a little bit of that like actually on my eyelashes. Oops. There's my sign, it's time to sharpen that dang thing finally. Here's what it's gonna be today. I'm using my Pat McGrath Fetish Eyes Mascara and a little bit of Thrive Liquid Lash Extensions on my lower lashes. Um, have you guys watched my haul? Well, if you haven't, get on over there, check it out. I gave my little, you know, two cents on this Pat McGrath mascara, and I think it builds really fast. You'll see that as I put it on. Um, the downside to me would be, I think the brush is a bit bunglesome, and I wish they tapered it toward the tip. It's not fantastic at holding a curl. It's not the worst, but it's just, it's not the best either. I need to really see what I'm doing here. But it's like Superhero from It Cosmetics in how fast. It takes your lashes up a notch, or up several notches. Kind of clumping some lashes together. I think the, the brush came out with just a ton of product this time. I think I did a pretty good job getting that on neatly. I'm just looking for any uh, rogue specks <laughs> that came off there. But I mean, that mascara really thickens and lengthens. I think it can just be a little weighty on my lashes. Then we're gonna use our Thrive because this just won't smudge no matter what. We were playing in the pool yesterday. Yay, pool season! And I kind of knew like I, I wasn't gonna do a lot of mega swimming, like getting underwater and stuff, but I was just like helping the girls jump in and do whatever. And so I didn't even take my makeup off before getting in. And I was just kind of fascinated by how I got out and I know this Thrive was on my lower lashes and they're just, you know, it's a tubing mascara. It, it's not gonna smear. And I think that's really cool because I was definitely getting splashed. Oh, it was such a nice night outside. And then we had for dinner, Bub grilled a pork loin. I made a pasta salad, had some potato salad too. So yummy. And let me tell you to my Queer Eye fans, those of you who did See that episode about the two barbecue ladies in Kansas City? We bought their sauce online and that sauce is so good. Like, so good. We had it last night on the pork loin. It was just bomb. Raise your hand if you feel like it's a lip balm day today. <laughs> I want a tinted lip balm, but I want some color with it. And so I think the perfect one to use is gonna be my Buxom in Flushed. Um, when I hold these up and you see them in the black tubes, this is the mini size, although it looks every bit as much as a full size lipstick. Don't you love that? That was the Christmas kit. I raved and raved and raved on that. And if you didn't pick it up for 25 bucks, not my fault. The full size is even bigger though, and they are back in stock. There's a period period of time were like fiery and flushed, the two that I love the most were out. But I had checked around the sale time and they're back. So this is cooling. This, I mean, the sensation putting it on is so refreshing. And look at the nice amount of color you get. And I did that video kind of a while back comparing some luxury lip balms, you know, and Ultimately, wasn't the end result kind of like, the Buxom might not be, you know, a YSL or a Givenchy or a Pat McGrath or whatever, but it still really holds its own and is a fantastic product and probably the best value. So moisturizing, so 
buttery feeling. The mintiness of it, I mean, it's something you feel in the cooling sensation more than the actual smell of mint. I mean, you're gonna smell a little mint, but to me, that's not the real overwhelming effect. It's the cooling sensation on the lips. It's so good. I mean, this is one of the best lip products Buxom makes. And look at that. Don't you kind of feel like it elevated the look a bit? Just a little deeper lip, considering that the eye was so, I don't know, kind of natural. I sort of did the Katy Perry vibe, but I mean, I got so much space between my eye and my eyebrow. That's a lot of space to fill with pink. I got the rosiness up there and I got it kind of, you know, blended up to that point. I think this might actually end up being a quicker tutorial as far as my tutorials go or my get ready with me. You know, basis of the look, a quick, easy foundation stick, pop on some concealer, set it with your powder. If you're a bronzer person, we did a little bit of that. Then it's so easy when a palette multitasks for you and it's like, I've got the coordinating blush, highlight, all the eyeshadow for a natural look and I still think as I look at this palette if you kind of ignore Cupid and Heart which were obviously fixtures of the look I did today but if you really don't look at those so much you've got other options that aren't so pinky you know everything outside of that is kind of a non-pink I don't feel like I really shorted myself in the glam department but if there is a step I would eliminate you know it's the eyeliner there are so many times where I don't feel like it's absolutely necessary and then color don't be afraid of some color on the lips just because a lot of your look could be defined as pink nude a berry lip looks great with this I think so thank you guys for watching I hope you were in the mood like I was for just a just Let's do a tutorial. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day, and I will see you soon. Bye.